ഹായ് ഓൾ വെൽക്കം ടു ആർത്തം അക്കാഡമി അസ്പയറിംഗ് ലീഡേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ഇന്നോവേഷൻ ഇൻ ടെക്നോളജി ഇൻ ടുഡേസ് വീഡിയോ വിൽ ബി ടോക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് നോൺ ലിനിയാരിറ്റി വി ഹാവ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് നോൺ ലിനിയാരിറ്റി വട്ട് ആർ ദ കണ്ടീഷൻസ് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ് വൈ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് യൂസ്ഫുൾ വെയർ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് നെസസറി ഇൻ ബ്രീഫ് വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് ബ്ലോക്ക് സോ ലെറ്റസ് ഗ്രൂ ഡീറ്റെയിൽസ് ഓഫ് ദ ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് നോൺ ലിനിയാരിറ്റി and what is nonlinearity nonlinear analysis is needed if the loading on a structure causes significant change in stiffness that means the typical reasons for the stiffness change may be because of contact large deformations or because of the material properties so let us focus on some of the purposes of doing nonlinear analysis sometimes linear analysis is not adequate and non linear analysis is necessary in the following conditions where we are going to design high performance components establish what is the cause of the failures simulating true material properties that is f complete stress strain curve or trying to gain a better understanding of physical phenomena how it is happening to the real scenarios so how we do how do we simulate it obviously as it is complex the simulation time takes higher in non linear analysis whereas in linear analysis stiffness is depends on the displacements which keeps changing so uh, why it will increase time unlike linear analysis stiffness depends on the uh, displacements which keeps changing that means for every portion for every part of a simulation stiffness will be updating to capture the non linear effect that's why it takes more time to solve compared to linear analysis here in the picture we can see the plot between displacement and force for linear and non linear spring stiffness is constant in linear whereas stiffness is not constant in linear which need to be updated at each and every point of time given time and that's why it takes very high time let us focus on the types of non linearity and what is the necessary of it a cost benefit analysis is usually necessary for before embarking on the non linear analysis of the problem that means sometimes it is very much required to do non linear analysis uh, rather than physical experiments in the ultimate conditions what are the three major types of non linearities here we are noting material geometric and boundary material is where the deformations and strains are large and it is not proportional to each other i mean to say material where the deformation and strains are large the best example is polymer materials or rubber materials plastic materials or the materials of uh, normal steel and other but crossing the yield strength the second one is geometry where the strains are small but rotations are large that is thin structures always the best example carries for geometric non linearity is fishing rod when we hold a fishing rod when fish got catched to the rod it will bend with very high rotations but large uh, smaller strains the third mo- very most important thing is boundary the non linearity will occur due to the non linear boundary condition that is nothing but if we have more than one component that is contact problems always whatever in real scenarios all our models are of assembly so this boundary plays a vital role in non linearity and we have different categories and different options depend on the application and functionality of the real life assemblies so one thing we have to note is non linearity may occur single or in combination either we can say for a simple cantilever beam if it is going beyond the load it may change 
uh, it may change to geometric or material so if we have more than one component it comes under boundary that is nothing but contact nonlinear now we will see in that there are sub branches are there which let us have a eye on it in material you can say nonlinear elastic inelastic and creep that means this material properties you can also check in our another blog where we are giving about multilinear and bilinear material properties there you will get to know how the material properties in detail how it will become nonlinear whereas in the geometry we have two things large deformation and large strain most of the times we will be carrying large deformations that is where i have given the example as fishing rod in boundary we have only one type that is contacts for example in a simple words i would like to rephrase this you can see where this geometry material and contact will happen so since we are saying large deformation you can see even for the linear geometry according to the application and according to the capture of the model we will have large deformation whereas in material we have to understand that if it is beyond elastic limits for any metals it will become nonlinear analysis and uh, for progressive creep deformation as well and whereas contact it may happen due to uh, the contact simulation that is frictional contacts or gap elastic penetration whatever so there are so many other conditions are there let us throw some light on each type of nonlinearity with some examples to give a sense of it as we are saying it is above the yield stress so many factors can influence a material stress strain curve such as you can say the load history environmental conditions or the amount of the time that the load is applied so it doesn't depend on it doesn't depend on which model comes under nonlinear these are various conditions some we have noted like it may happen because of the earlier loads also because of change in temperatures or the creep if it is happening to be large amount of time because of this nonlinear effect may happen where stress is not proportional to strain after it is crossing yield if still the system works and it is transferring i mean if, but the material got went beyond yield so that is where we'll call as nonlinear material and this is the first and foremost thing of the nonlinearity is one of the nonlinearities the second one is geometric nonlinearity let us see what's the definition says geometric nonlinearity arises when the change in the models geometry are very high during the course of deformation this is the best example as shown in this pic you can see once the fish holds the foot automatically the fishing rod bends it doesn't mean that is a permanent bending so if we take linear this bending we cannot capture it so for this simple problem also we have to go for nonlinear where we can capture the geometry as per the functionality of the model uh, when it ha when the nonlinearity happens when there is large uh, deformations large rotations are both initial loading conditions before starting of the analysis these conditions are all applicable for nonlinear geometry the third and foremost important thing is contact nonlinearity when two separate surfaces touch each other such that they become mutual tangent they are said to be in contact you can see in the picture when the two different components different stiffness different things different materials human body and a ball when two it is touching okay they make a contact tangent tangential to each other in contact nonlinearity abrupt change in stiffness may occur when two bodies come into or out of contact each other so that's why contact properties we have to understand each and every point according to the functionality or according to the physics of the model and apply the properties 
uh, in that respective sense. This type of nonlinearity is used to simulate gap between two contacts. And the common in the common physical sense, surfaces that are in contact have below characters. They do not interpen interpenetrate. They can transmit compressive normal stress and tangential frictional forces. They often do not transfer tensile normal stresses. They are therefore free to separate and move away from each other. This is uh, some of the examples are some of the properties we which we will see in a physical sense between any two objects. So some I have noted in the picture you can see they are free to separate nut and the wrench which will get free to separate once we are fixing the wrench. Okay, like this there were so many applications are there and we should be very careful for defining the context. Most of the unconvergence issues will happen based on contact nonlinearity only. So now we will talk about what are the issues are, uh, we are going to uh, get based on the nonlinearity effects. Achieving convergence is the most biggest issue that always, uh, already I have mentioned. The big, uh, this convergence in nonlinearity problem is a big challenge that too in contact nonlinearity. Balancing expenses versus accuracy. So when we are doing, always we do that wherever these kind of simulations are happening. This is for a very big uh, models or big assemblies. Also, if we are doing for small assemblies, as the stiffness matrix is ch getting changed for each and every moment, the time solution time taken for this is very high. So we have to uh, understand about the mesh quality, density, solution time, solution options and contact options while doing the analysis to balance expenses between accuracy and time. The other thing is verification is very difficult because it is not proportional. There we have to go each and every location in detail and make some sensitivity studies to fix our issues. Generally on what basis it is happening. Is it by happening because of the uh, mesh is it happening because of mesh or the load applied or the other parameters in the model according to the shape and size or thickness of the model. As we say it is not proportional, we cannot scale the results in a nonlinear analysis. The structural behavior can be markably non-proportional to the applied load since it is going to beyond the linear effect. These are some references I have captured. You can go through references for more details as well. Thank you. Hope this give a good sense on type of nonlinearities and where what type we have to apply it according to the physics of the problem. Have a great day. Thank you. Happy learning.